Good morning and welcome to Wayne Goldsboro Television. I am Kim Best, your host. And I'm Wayne Alley and uh, I'm also a host and we're here on this, what day is this? Is Thursday. This Thursday, Thursday, March the 7th. Wow, it just seemed like yesterday was Wednesday, March the 6th, but what do I know? <laughs> Okay. I think it was, Wayne. Oh, okay, <laughs> whatever works. Well, I read the calendar once, and that's what it said. Of course, I stopped reading it. I'm waiting for the movie, but I'm excited about that. <laughs> <coughs> Moving along here, good morning to you as well. What's on today's program? Today we have, let's see, details on an international festival taking place. Wow. Along with Discovery Tech, and I know you've told oh, us quite yeah. a bit about that. Yeah, I'm excited about that. That's great. Crime Stoppers, Paige Learner is here to tell us some, some crimes that the community needs. Um, she, the police department needs your help with. That's right. And the Family Y, Goldsboro Family Y was here to talk about a big event happening at the Family Y. That is a full day. Yes, it what is. What a great program we have lined up today. The Career Day Job Fair getting underway mid-April at the uh, at Wayne Community College. Now, it says that it begins at 9 o'clock on that day, April 18th. Mm -hmm. That's a Thursday at Wayne Community College in the Learning Center Atrium, which is the big building where all the flags are in front, and that's the uh, atrium is inside where the, the, the skylights are. Right. Anyway, that's a big event uh, presented by the Wayne Community College Cooperative Education Department, as well as the Seymour Johnson Air Force Base and Airmen and Family Readiness Center as well. So if you want to receive updates about this, you can text your name and career WCC 2013 to 1-805-500-7171. That number again, 1-805-500-7171. And if you are not certain about that, call the college at 735-5151. That's All right. exactly that's right. About the information about the Career Day Job Fair. Exactly. Yeah. And Wayne, if you want to go fishing, we've got the tournament for you. Oh, it's a tournament? It is. It's a tournament. It is a tournament. <laughs> it is Saturday, March the 16th. It is the 2013 Shad Tournament. Oh, it is yeah. a partnership between Easy Bait and Tackle and Goldsboro Parks and Recreation. Let's see. What all do they have? Oh, my goodness. All kinds of cash prizes. First place, second, third, fourth, door prizes, and a long list of activities happening. But it's $10 if you want to be entered into the Shad Tournament. It starts at 7 a.m. <coughs> It'll last until 4 p.m. And this takes place at Waynesboro Park. Wow. More details if you go, if you look at Goldsboro Parks and Recreation's website, or you can just stop by Easy Bait and Tackle and find out more. Easy Bait and Tackle put this, started putting this on years ago. Yeah, about nine or ten years ago. Goldsboro Parks and Recreation just became a part of that. They certainly it did. It is. In fact, it's so big now. It could even, if you... It could be a festival. It could be a festival. It you certainly my could. I thought that's where you were going. <laughs> if you want to call Easy Bait and Tackle, the number is 919 <laughs> 736-2488. That is right. Correct? 736-2488. That's there right. you That's go. Exactly you know, Kim right. has problems with her eyes sometimes. <laughs> so I need a second <laughs> set of eyes checking it out. <laughs> okay. As if you trusted mine to be correct. Yeah. Well, we got a big old Blackberry production and planting workshop coming up here. I love Blackberries. Don't you love them? I love them. Anyway, that's coming up March 23rd, sponsored by the Cooperative Extension Service and CEPS the Center for Environmental Farming Systems. That'll be coming up. Registration fee is only $10 for this. You learn how to, how to plant, you learn how to, uh, how to feed, you learn how to baby these things. <laughs> oh boy, pays off in the end. It's a workshop and it's on March 23rd and they, uh, you can register by calling Lisa Forehand and Lisa's phone number is 1-919-513-0111. Five four. That's in Raleigh. It's a long distance call. One nine one nine five one three zero nine five four. That's right. Right. Well, let's see. The Mental Health Association is holding a lunch and learn next Wednesday, March the thirteenth, from twelve until one. That's right. Uh, it's free if you just want to attend, but if you'd like to eat lunch, there is a five dollar fee. It'll be held at Wages on Royal Avenue here in Goldsboro. The Mental Health Association will host the Lunch and Learn. Um, it'll be focusing on programs that Wages offers here in our community. Uh, the guest speaker will be Dr. Marley Ray, of course from Wages. She is the executive director there. They want you to register very soon. It's free, like I said, unless you would like to eat lunch, then there is a $5 fee. The telephone number to call to register is 919-734-3530. 
if you would like to register for the Mental Health Association's Lunch and Learn. Like I said, it's all about the programs that are, programs that are offered at wages That's right. on Royal Avenue. Well, I got word from Chris over at the museum here just a little while ago. Uh -huh. This coming Saturday, this Saturday, at the museum at 1 o'clock this Saturday, uh, guest speaker Joel Dobson is coming back. Oh, uh, yes. He's a speaker, and he'll be speaking about that crash, the B-52 crash, uh, back in 1961, when the crash of a nuclear weapons-equipped B-52 bomber in northeastern Wayne County, it mm -hmm. happened in Faro. Uh, one bomb was fully recovered, the other bomb, uh, but the bomb disposal team could not locate the uranium of the second device. Each bomb 250 times more powerful than Hiroshima's bomb, and if detonated, would have killed all the people within a 17-mile radius. Mm. Whee! <laughs> so... It's called the Goldsboro Broken Arrow. Now, Mr. Dobson was here last year and spoke to us at the library about this event, about the uh, crash of the B-52. Signed copies will be available. Uh, the, the book, uh, The Goldsboro Broken Arrow, will be available uh, for purchase. The program is, itself is free and open to the public. If you want more information, you can call the library at 734-5023, 734-5023. C SPAN is coming back to Goldsboro oh, to wow. video this program with Dr. with uh, Mr. Dobson. Joel Dobson will be videotaped by C SPAN. This is the second time C SPAN's been here in, in recent times to video a program at the Wayne County Museum. So, well, I've heard him speak. He came and spoke to a group that I was a part of, and it, it is extremely interesting. It is. It's things you may have never heard before about your own community. That's right. That's exactly right. And this was. This was a major event. It certainly was. In 1961. I know it's, that's 50 some years ago, but uh, this was a major event. It's and still it's, relevant. It's, it's still relevant. That's exactly right. All right. Who's up next? Let's see. I believe first we're going to go and hear about this big international festival that is taking place. Oh, so boy. stay tuned. You don't want to miss it.
And we're back on this Thursday morning. It is the 6th, 7th, I'm sorry. Seven. See, I can't keep up. It's going so fast. It's the 7th <laughs> of the month of March. No, uh, uh, two, three, four. Of uh, March, 7th of March, and we're moving right along here. Here's today's, I've got a trivia question. Here's today's trivia question. All right, hold on tight. All right, the year was 1927. Mm -hmm. Lindbergh had flown, was getting ready to fly the Atlantic. And boy, that's a story in itself. There's so much trivia involved with that one, but I'll save that for later. Lindbergh's getting ready to fly the Atlantic. World War II had been over 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, nine years. Uh, World War World War One had been over for a number of years. Not, World War II had not even been thought about yet, but was getting close. And right in the middle of all that, the United States came up with a plan, maybe, to invade another country. Oh. World War One had been over for quite a while. World War Two was yet to start right in the middle. The United States came up with a plan to invade another country. You want to know what country that was? I want to know which country that was. Hmm. Think about that one. All right. Think about that one. That's right. Think about it. All right. 1927 it. was the year. All Think right. Well, we'll that. ponder that and ponder. give you some ideas and some suggestions in a few minutes and see if we're close or right okay. or wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Tai Chi. Yes. Tai Chi. What about it? Tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow <laughs> afternoon, rather, at, uh, at the... Uh, at the Senior Center on East Ash Street, the Peggy M. Seegers <laughs> Senior Center. That is a East tongue Ash twister. It is. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, 2 o'clock, Thane Collins, a second degree black belt in Kung Fu and Jiu Jitsu, will offer a free class in Tai Chi to anyone 60 and older. Advanced registration is required, so you have, should have already registered by now. But if you have any questions about it, you can call Aaron at 705-1785. 705-1785. Well, Wayne, are you ready to run? <laughs> <laughs> not really, huh? Uh, well, I need to. So do I. All well, right. here's an opportunity for not only us, but for you all. You the come. Greater Goldsboro Road Run oh, boy. is coming up. Let's see. It's Saturday, April the 13th, so mark your calendar. It's going to happen downtown Goldsboro. The Sunrise Kiwanis sponsors this. And this is one of the oldest runs in the entire state, Wayne. So I think it's the second I oldest. I believe think it was. I think it's the second oldest in the state. It certainly is. That's yeah. the Greater Goldsboro Road Run. And they have a lot of great sponsors that come on board and help them out. But it's going to start downtown Goldsboro at Cornerstone Commons on Saturday, April the 13th. If you'd like to find out a lot of details and more information about this run, you can go to runtheeast.com. R U N T H E E S T. Dot com. What did I say? <laughs> well, we won't spell it for you. Run the East. <laughs> That's called trying to move too quick. <laughs> Run That's the right. East dot com. That's and they've right. got all their documents there and everything. They've got a ten a ten K, a five K, a five K walk, and a one mile fun run. Wow. A little bit for everybody. It's happening downtown Goldsboro, Saturday, April thirteenth. Run the East dot com. <laughs> Don't try to spell it at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, boy. Okay. Let's see. What else do we have here today? Well, I have a lot of paper for one thing. Uh, anyway, it's. Thursday. You want to golf? Yeah, let's golf. Why don't we oh, golf? Oh, boy. The 15th annual The Y Scholarship Foundation is holding a. Uh, their 15th annual golf tournament. Tournament. That's April 18th. The We Build People is their. Is their uh, phrase, uh, motto. <laughs> It'll all take place at the Walnut Creek Country Club. Goldsboro Family Y will offer lunch at 11 o'clock, tea time 12 o'clock. Uh, it's only $400 per team, for the whole team now. Team fees include lunch and dinner the day of the event. Oh, cart nice. fees. Yeah, cart fees and green fees and goodie bags and everything else. Everything else. Uh, snacks on the course and everything else. Anyway, call Cricket. And Cricket's number is at 778-8557, 778-8557. That's the Goldsboro Family Y. It is, and this particular golf tournament is where they raise funds to give scholarships back to the, the children in the community, whether it's um, for education or whether it's just for them to be able to participate at the Goldsboro Family Y. Yeah. So this is a great, great opportunity for you to give back to others in our community. And one more time, that's April 18th. But call Cricket and get your team together and get registered taking place at Walnut Creek Country Club. 778-8557. Is Cricket's number. Is Cricket's number. <laughs> That's right. Oh, the senior games. 
So Senior coming day. up. Oh boy, this coming Tuesday, as a matter of fact. That's right. Uh, the, co the cost on this now is a five dollar fee for this, but uh, it starts at nine thirty at the senior center. And uh, we need to get Christy uh, talk we about this. We certainly do. Uh, Christy, uh, Christy McDonald and Jeannie Loving, Senior Games Ambassadors, will be at the Senior Center Tuesdays and Thursdays starting March 12th, and this will go all the way through April 4th now, to help with Senior re Games registrations. Any senior interested in learning more about Senior Games or interested in registering can meet with those folks, Christy or Jeannie. Uh, at the Senior Center on various dates. You can call Christy McDonald. Let me give you her phone number. Her number 221-8102. That's area code 919-221-8102. Or call the Senior Center. One of the things they were telling me recently, Wayne, is they're going to have so many different games that everybody may not be familiar with all the games. So these ladies are going to teach us, the community, whoever wants to participate, how to play these games. Oh boy. So you sort of get a head start by trying to learn how to play the games and then you can participate in the official senior games. Oh, okay. So you get to practice first. You get to practice. Instead of going in there and not knowing what you're doing. Exactly, which All is right. always a good thing. Which is what I'm usually accustomed to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see what else we have here. What else is going on? Well, pretty soon yeah. it's going to be time to fly kites. You know how we've had some very windy days lately? Oh, yeah. But we're hoping March 23rd is going to have some wind because we're going to fly some kites. March from, winds, yeah. We need yeah. some March winds. We need some March winds. At least on this day, March 23rd from 10 until 12 at H.V. Brown Park. This is a free event, ages four and up. Bring your own kite and anything you want to bring with your kite. <laughs> you can call 739-7491 for more information. Mm -hmm. This is through Goldsboro Parks and Recreation. Mm -hmm. It is a day to fly kites, bring your family members, bring a picnic, whatever you want to do, turn it into a family event. But they're going to show you how to fly kites and the more interesting your kite is, the better. Oh, they're going to have yeah. all kinds of prizes and goodies and that is on March 23rd at H.V. Brown Park. All right. Well, you know, we're getting closer to the uh, the Junior Livestock Show and Sale event coming up at the Wayne County. That hadn't uh, happened yet? Wayne Fairgrounds. I knew no, it was getting close. Getting, getting close. It's the end of this month, and, and they have workshops going on all the time. Uh, the next major mm -hmm. portion of this, because there's things going on all the time, okay. the next major portion will be the pre-show setup, which is April 1st and 2nd. And then on April 3rd and 4th, mm -hmm. the Junior Livestock Show and sell, Sale itself gets oh, underway. Okay. So it's coming uh, up. Coming up on the 3rd and 4th, the Junior Livestock Show and Sale, sponsored by the Wayne County Livestock Development Association. It all gets underway. And that's, uh, if you want information about that, you can, you can talk to someone with the Wayne County uh, Livestock Development Association. You can talk to Eddie or anyone out at the Wayne Regional Fairgrounds. That's right. All right. There you go. Also, I want to let you know that uh, still over at the, over at the uh, county planner's office, Connie Price let us know that the Mount Olive Comprehensive Transportation Plan is available for public viewing uh, during normal business hours at the Wayne County Planning Office. That's at 134 North John Street. And if you have any questions, uh, go online to waynegov.com and find that phone number. All right. There you go. It's on, <laughs> it's on our website. That's at 134 North John Street, public viewing during regular business hours. If you don't have any questions, you can still just go. You don't have to call. And that's going to be the case now through March 20th. Right. Okay. We want to remind you that Goldsboro has a new initiative. It's called GPAC, or Goldsboro Partners Against Crime. On the city of Goldsboro's website, which is goldsboronc.gov, you can go there and right on the home page you'll see GPAC. Click on that and it'll give you all the information of what this initiative is all about. It's about providing safe neighborhoods and having a safe environment and community to live in. And these are listed lots of activities and programs that will be taking place to make sure that does happen. We need your help. We want your help. So check it out, goldsboronc.gov, GPAC, Goldsboro Partners Against Crime. Love to have your input. Well, let's see, Wayne. Yes. I believe it's time to go on and let's see some other interesting information, Discovery Tech, oh Crime boy. Stoppers, and oh yeah. the Goldsboro Family Why. Wow. Stay tuned. Our guest today is Melissa Sheldon with the Wayne County Public Library. Good morning to you. Good morning, Wayne. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you coming in. Got a lot of things going on at the Wayne County Public Library. We do, yes. All right. What's happening? So we are very excited. Uh, this coming Saturday, March the 9th, we are opening an exhibit called Discover Tech. It is an engineering exhibit all about 
engineering and how engineers make a difference in the world. Okay, so engineering. Now we're talking mm -hmm. about engineers who build things and design things and work in all sorts of areas of engineering. Yes. And that yes. includes mechanical engineering? And mechanical engineering, um, electrical engineering. Okay. Um, all sorts of things. Building bridges. Right. That's part of engineering. Um, solar power, robotics, prosthetics is covered. A little so bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Now this is great. So from where is this, this, this coming? Uh, is this a touring thing that tours the country? It is, or? yes. It is um, an exhibit. It's sponsored by the National Science Foundation and the Lunar and Planetary Institute. Mm -hmm. um, the Space Science Institute is actually the one who designed it. Right. Um, it is visiting eight libraries around the country, and we were one of them. We were one of eight. We were one of eight entire in the entire country chosen to host this exhibit. How did that happen? Uh, Christina Gabriel, one of the reference librarians, and I wrote a grant. Um, that sponsored this exhibit. We were very excited when we got it. I'm sure. Well, that's wonderful. Yes, that's so wonderful. Uh, well, we should be very proud of that. That's that's fantastic. Well, thank you, Wayne. That we're one of eight in the entire country. One of eight in the country. Yes, the exhibit actually got here last week, so we started setting it up. It's not quite set up yet, but it'll open on Saturday. So I can imagine there's a lot of work setting this up. Now, what are some of the things that we might be able to see and or do? This this is a hands-on. It is hands-on, very interactive, um, designed you know, for kids of all ages on up through high school mm -hmm. to enjoy. There's a, one, one of the displays is about building a bridge. Um, it's got all these little blocks and you actually lay them out on the board and then stand it up and try to make the bridge oh. stay up. Okay. Um, so that one's pretty fun. There's a quiz game um, for kids to test how much they know about engineering right. and what engineering did. That's, uh, um, I think three people can play that at one time. It's okay. up on a big TV monitor. Same thing, there's one about robotics. Okay. Uh, there's robotics is very big now. Very it is. popular. It is. Uh, also, uh, this is not, you know, in the past, it's stereotypically, mm -hmm. uh, engineering uh, was thought of as a man's world, sort of. But now that's all changed. It has changed. It has changed a in lot fact, of girls, for several years. A lot, a lot of, of women girls. are getting into engineering. Which is great. Yes, it's becoming much less of a, of a man's world. Bringing new ideas, new mm -hmm. thoughts, new designs. Right. Right. You know, sometimes the male brain, the female brain just work differently. And really? everybody needs to be there together to figure it out. That's, you're right about that. Yes. That's absolutely right. Okay, well, again, it's this Saturday. It opens this Saturday. It'll actually be here until April 30th. Oh, okay. So it's going to be here for about eight weeks. That's great. So will some, the, 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 it'll be set up in the Wheel Auditorium, I guess. In the Wheel Auditorium down at the library, the yes. The Wayne County Public Library on East Ash Street. Now, it'll be set up there. What are the hours, regular library hours? Regular library hours. We are okay. scheduling field trips during the school day. Okay. So some days it will be closed during okay. the day when there's groups there. But, now but other than that, it'll be open whenever the library's open. Open, and people can just walk in and view the, the displays and, yes. and, and experiment and go hands-on with some of the... Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, just come on in. That is fantastic. There'll probably be some people in there handing out a scavenger hunt for the kids or something like that. Right. Okay, so again, it's, it's all about engineering. It's en engineering, it's discover, technology, yes. Discovery. Discover tech. Discover tech, it's called. Yes. One of eight libraries <laughs> in the entire country right here in Wayne yes. County, North Carolina. And Wayne, let me tell you also about our programs that we're doing um, to go along with it. Okay. For the next two months, all of the programs at the library are going to be related to science, technology, engineering fields. Okay. Um, we're going to be having Saturday morning programs for the children. Right. Uh, one of them I know is the science of flight. They're going to be building whirly gigs and stomp rockets and paper airplanes and all sorts of things that fly. Paper airplanes? Paper airplanes, I love yes. paper airplanes. <laughs> Me too. Do you really? Yes. Did you ever fly them in school and get in trouble? Mm, maybe. Okay, all right. <laughs> we, we admit nothing, okay? Right, right. <laughs> all right. Do you ever fly paper airplanes now at the public library? We will on Saturday. <laughs> March 27th. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> we will be flying lots of paper airplanes at the library. Okay, that's great. Uh, so, uh, uh, and this is about flight. Yes. The study of flight. Yes. Uh, lift and drag and, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. great. Um, there's also a program on the base. Um, what is his name? Mr. Latham from the base. Yes. Um, is coming. He's an industrial engineer and he's right. bringing the Airman E-Beast to talk about conserving energy. The E-Beast. The E-Beast, yes. All right. He's a big, green, furry 
Beast. Beast. <laughs> yes. Um, but they do a program on energy conservation. Okay. Great. So they will be coming on April the 20th, All once right. again, Saturday morning, 10 o'clock. All right. Very good. There's a lot yes. of things happening at the lots library. Lots of things. Lots of things. Yes. The 4-H team um, who competes in the robotics competition, right. they'll be coming one Thursday evening um, and showing their robot. Okay. So last year, I think their robot was maybe 17th place. Yeah. In the state. Which was pretty high because it was were, pretty high. There, there were was, a couple hundred. There was a couple hundred entrants in that uh, mm -hmm. competition. So uh, Wayne County did very well. They did. They yeah. did very well. And they'll actually be there with information about joining the robotics team too. They have a high school team right now and they're trying to yeah. start a younger age team That's for like great. elementary school, middle school. That's great. So if someone has a question about this before it gets here, if they did, I mean, what would they do? How do they contact you? Or do they contact you at all? Oh, yes, they can contact me. Right. Um, you can just call the library. Mm -hmm. The library's phone number is 919-735-1824. Or you can go to our website, www.wcpl.org. All right, and we've been talking with Melissa Sheldon of the Wayne County Public Library. And Melissa is, uh, what do you do at the library? I'm the Public Relations Coordinator. All right, very good. Public Relations Coordinator. The Wayne County Public Library and Discover Tech this Saturday. This Saturday, All yes, right. sir. Thank you, Melissa. Okay, thank you very much, Wayne. Good morning and welcome to Wayne Goldsboro Television. Joining me today is Paige Leonard of Crime Stoppers. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. I appreciate well, you having me. Every week you come on the show and you tell the community about various things that have happened around mm -hmm. Wayne County and the city of Goldsboro. Basically things we need their help with, right Paige? Right, right. Um, two things I want to talk about today. One is a suspect that we're looking for. Actually what happened was on February 9th, Contaza Armstrong reported that a known male came into her house, broke the door, came in and assaulted her and then poured uh, bleach on personal items. Um, Later, after an investigation, warrants were secured on a Rakim Heath, and that was for breaking and entering, injury to property. He's actually got a probation violation outstanding on him. I've brought a picture of him to help the public right, as far as looking for him. Mm -hmm. He is a 21-year-old black male. He's got a nickname by the name of Rock. The last known address was 805 McDaniel Avenue. He has an unusual tattoo on his right hand, and it says, Rude Boy. So that's fairly well, that uh, be recognizable. Easy to, easy to spot. Yeah. Right. And so I, I know that he is known in the community, and so we need the public's help as far as locating him. If they see him, obviously, if they're looking right at him, they can call 911. Right. If they have information to, to provide as far as maybe a suggestion on an address of a family member or a friend or something like that, uh, they can also call me at Crime Stoppers, and that's at the 735-225 number. And if they just want to text me, it's mm -hmm. the same phone, and they can text me at 222-4230. And Paige, you told us before, we'll remind everybody again, these numbers are blocked, so right. when you call Paige, or when you call the number behind us, you're actually calling her phone, and she can't see the number you're calling from. That's right. It's, uh, it shows unavailable, and that, that guards both of us. It guards the public so right. that they can legally remain anonymous. It guards me. If I were to ever be called in court, they are, that way I can say when they call my phone, it is it shows blocked, and right. it does not show their name, does not show their number. It helps both of us. So that's, uh, that's a big concern. People will ask a lot of times, I'll get a lot of messages that say, uh, call me back at this number. Well, obviously, I can't call them back. Right. Um, and so I, I, I try to get that word out there, too. They, they've got to call me. So, um, yeah, we need their help. Well, if they, if they see somebody or see this, this person out on the street, they can call 911, yeah. or they can text or call the Crime Stoppers number. Right, right. And you'll get back with them, and then you can make it yep. the contact I try to. Forward. Well, I like to tell them, if they're looking right at him, Obviously, if they can't get me on the phone, th they can call the 911 number, and, and that is one thing that would merit them calling 911. Okay. If it's information they want to provide or they're looking at them, they can still call me, and then I will get the, that information out to the dispatchers and get the officers on scene. And try to make note of what he's wearing and some yeah. details about where he is and that right. type of thing, so if they he, can pass the information on to you. That's right. It helps the officers. Wonderful. Yeah. Do you have another case you'd like to ask um, us about today? The second thing is not actually a case. Sheriff's Department is uh, wanting to bring something to the public's attention. Mm -hmm. They have had an enormous amount of vehicle break-ins, like the city has too. Mm -hmm. But in particular, between the end of December through March 4th, they've had 36 vehicles broke into. Wow. Of those 36 vehicles, 
only two were locked. The other were unlocked, unsecured, and uh, that just makes it easier on these thieves out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. We're, we're making it easy on yes. them by not locking our cars. We are making it easy. And what's happening is a lot of these vehicles, these vehicles were parked in the owner's yards. And so they park their cars, they think that their cars are safe, right. but their cars are being plummeted through during the evening. And so if they lock their cars, that would definitely be a big help to the Sheriff's Department. And, and they did point out the areas that they've been hit hard is Hickory Hills, Forest Hills, and Dollar Town Road area. Um, and, and items being taken are, are the same things, GPS units, yeah. firearms, wallets, clothing items, anything left in that car, uh, they're going to take it. And so if they could just secure that vehicle, that, that might knock down one avenue. Right. It, at least it's not making it quite so easy for them right. if we lock the doors of our own cars. Right. Even if it's in our yard where you think you're safe, yeah. go ahead and lock your car. Lock your cars and don't leave your items out visible. Well, because sometimes that is just a reason for someone to try to get in your mm -hmm. car if they see something enticing. Right, absolutely. Um, and, and they don't know if it's a trend, but if it is and the public out there has some information as far as suspects mm -hmm. and these break-ins, they want that information. They um, they can contact me through Crime Shoppers, the 735-225 number, okay. and I will certainly get it to those detectives at the Sheriff's Department. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Paige, for thank sharing you. both those bits of information. And if you see anything that Paige has talked about today, call the number behind us. Remember, the number is blocked. When you call, she will not know who the person is that is calling, <coughs> and you all can make contact and move forward from there. Thanks so much for being with us today, thank you. Paige. And this is what's happening in our community. Joining me today is Anna Whitman of Goldsboro Family Wide. Welcome to the show, Anna. Well, thank you for having me, Kim. We are glad to hear about what's happening over at the Family Y. Um, we are getting ready to have our 15th annual uh, We Build People Scholarship Fund Golf Tournament. It's going to be held at the Village of Walnut Creek. We are The tea time is actually going to be at 12 and we're going to have a lunch at 11. And the fees are going to be $400 for a team to come and play. So if somebody wants to have a team and, and join this Family Y event, where do they go or how do they sign up? They can sign up at the, the Family Y or they can give us a call at 919-778-8557 um, and contact cool. Cricket Davis. Cricket Davis. Sounds good. So you've been doing this for 15 years. Yes, ma'am. Have, have the funds always gone for the same thing, always for scholarships? Yes, ma'am. The scholarship fund is truly an amazing thing. Um, if someone comes to the Y and they're not able to pay mm -hmm. um, for any program or a membership, that is what the fund is actually used for. So even if it's you know summer camp, it's only $85 to send a child to summer camp. And wow, swim so nobody's lessons. turned away. Right, so it's just a phenomenal program that we can offer to our community. Well, I see you are a membership services team. You're on that team, so tell me more about what you do. What is your job? I get to go out into the community, build relationships with other organizations, um, attend health fairs, and just let everyone know the, the awesome things that we're doing at the Family Y. So you are educating us on what all is happening there. Yes, ma'am. And you all are, are busy and always always having fun activities and exciting things going on. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sometime in April, we're going to have a Healthy Kids Day. So just look for um, on our website and you know throughout the community of when that event is going to be held. Well, that I've been to that many, many times. <laughs> and it's so neat to see all the community come together and all the different agencies come and in one day share all the different programs that are happening and services all around our community. Yes, ma'am. That's one thing that we really enjoy partnering up with the community and just making our community stronger. All right, so everybody don't forget, the Family Y has the 15th annual golf tournament on April 18th at Walnut Creek Country Club. If you're interested in being a part of that, call Cricket Davis or Anna Whitman at 919-778-8557. Perfect. Thank you for being with us today. We appreciate you being on the show. Well, thanks for having me. And that's what's happening at Goldsboro Family Y. And we are back. We are. What great information that has been today. I loved it. I'll tell you what. Very quickly, let me tell you about the wall coming to Wayne County. This is the that's only right. time, the only time this entire year that the wall, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial uh, wall will be in North Carolina, in all of North Carolina. It's coming to Wayne County. On April 16th, it will be coming in with, a, with all kinds of uh, 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 accompaniment, mm -hmm. uh, motorcycle clubs, uh, law enforcement. It will be coming in to us here in Wayne County. Well, it's this a special day. It's a special thing to have in our community. It's very special, and I want everyone to attend, and they're expecting a lot of people to attend. I mean, we're talking thousands of people. <clears throat> to come into uh, to Wayne County to visit and see the wall. And what date's it coming, Wayne? April 16th it will be here, and it will be set up at 
Wayne Community College campus. Now, this is really a big, big deal. Now, uh, there's going to be arrangements set up so that this wall is available for viewing 24-7. Wow. All day and all night. So it'll be here two days? Be here. A day and no, a night. Be here, actually, almost six days. Is it? Okay, so a About whole week. Six or seven days. Be here all week. Yeah. And uh, there'll be lights set up if anyone wanted to go at three or four o'clock in the morning, you could do that. But anyway, we're going to tell you more about this a little later on, closer we get to April 16th. But this is major for Wayne County. It'll be set up at Wayne Community College. And uh, I'm working with Jack and, uh, and the, uh, the Patriot uh, the Coalition. Whole and the whole mm -hmm. foundation. And of course, Kurt Keller. And so many people, there's hundreds of people involved with this. And we'll get some more people to come on and talk about it and give us more details. That we will. Absolutely. We will. So anyway, that's coming. That's coming. We'll tell you more about that. That's and right. also, <laughs> Five foods? Why? Okay, I have this here, don't uh, I? Five yes, foods do. that are more fattening than, than you, you think. might think. That's exactly right. Did you realize, you know how fattening those soft, large pretzels are? I bet they're bad. Very. Because they're really good. They are <laughs> really good. Uh, one of those large, soft pretzels uh -huh. has almost 500 calories. In one large pretzel? Yeah, yeah. One of those large, soft wow. pretzels. And Did that don't count the cheese you dip it down in? No, that's extra. That's extra. That's extra. Yeah. And 4.4 grams of fat. Wow. So if you were actually looking at that on a label, it could be listed as 4,400 mm. milligrams. Oh, my goodness. 4,400 milligrams of fat. That's a lot of fat. Also, yes, it is. more fattening than you might think, a chef's salad with two ounces of Thousand Island dressing. This, this kills me. Yeah. This kills me. A chef's salad with two ounces of Thousand Island, mm -hmm. 860 calories. Oh my Eight, goodness. So you think you're eating a salad that's really, really good, but then you pour the Thousand the Island on it, it, which is made of mostly mayonnaise? 61 wow. grams of fat. So it's still okay to eat your chef's salad. Just be very careful what dressing you put on there. That's right. Or put it on the side and dip. And don't you love blueberry muffins? Love them. Oh boy. Are Four, they really bad for me too? 444 calories. In one muffin? In one muffin. 444 calories and 21.7 <laughs> grams of fat. So in the morning, if you have a muffin mm. and you have an apple, mm. hmm, mm. which one is more fattening? Hmm. Mm. That good old muffin. Yeah. Those blueberries and blackberries you talk about all the time, how yummy they yeah, are. Yeah, well, yeah. And they are. And what else are. is more fattening okay, than we think? Okay, one more. The final one I have is turkey, bacon, and avocado club sandwich on wheat bread. Now, wheat bread is always yeah. good. You know, you would think. You would think. You would think. Are we wrong? Turkey, bacon, and avocado club, 660 calories, 38 and a half grams of fat. Why? I don't know. My goodness, that bacon. Yeah, it's got to be the bacon. Maybe yeah. we should just take the bacon off the sandwich and we'll be all right. Yeah. Maybe the calories will just... Well, that leaves turkey, which is usually low in Should be good for you. The fat. wheat bread's yeah. good for you. And wheat bread's good. And it and depends on what kind of spread you put on there. Oh, you got to put spread on here? Well, oh, I mean, well. you can. That kind of... And finally, <laughs> mixed dry roasted nuts. One cup, if you can only eat that few. No, no. One cup is 814 calories and 70 and a half grams of fat. That's a bunch. Why in the world? We're told to eat nuts because they're good. Is it all the salt? What in the world is gotta it? Gotta be the salt. Gotta be. Well, that because, would drive the well, sodium Well, generally, up. nuts are pretty fattening anyway. If you have just a handful or less, it's okay. But if the more you eat, the, the worse it gets. Of course, the more you eat, the harder it is to put them down. <laughs> I know. That's the problem. 1927 was the year, and here's what was going on. The U.S. was afraid that we were going to be invaded. So we decided to set up a defense that was that the offense would have been a better defense. Mm -hmm. All right, so our offense was against the country of? Tell us. Canada. We really, were, our we neighbors, were, Canadians. We were, we were going to invade Canada in, back in 1927 because we weren't really sure, you know, how England, if they wanted to continue their expansion or try their expansion mm -hmm. again of, of the new world. This was 1927, this hadn't been that long ago. And uh, they were afraid that uh, <laughs> the England would come into Canada, which had already received its independence from, from right. England. But they were still afraid that maybe Canada might be the jumping off point for someone to come in and take over the U.S. So we started a plan to invade Canada. But didn't, what stopped didn't us? Well, they just, they, they, uh, cooler heads prevailed. Well, there you go. That now, happens. The funny thing is, that is about six or eight years earlier, Canada had a plan to, to invade us. To invade us. Wow. But they, they got rid of that plan real quick because they said, no, we can't invade our friends. 
And here a few years later, we were saying, well, now. Well, maybe we can. Anyway, that was 19, <laughs> early 19 and middle 1920s. So that's the answer to your trivia question. It was Canada. Canada. It's kind of an interesting story, too, mm -hmm. if you ever get a chance to look that up. 1927. Wow. All right. Well, join us again tomorrow. Who's on tomorrow's program? Tomorrow, let's see. We're going to have. Oh. Oh, somebody's going to be here about discussing brain injury. Yes, it's brain injury month. Yes, March it is. is. Brain injury yes, awareness is. month, and and Pierre Are Tarrant they from is going to be with us. Renew from life. From Renew Life. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Then we'll have Kate Daniels here. She's talking about uh, the Junior Women's Club. Oh boy. And an event they're having coming up really soon. We've got somebody here from the Mount Olive Chamber of Commerce. I bet they're talking about that pickle festival. You never you're right. know. I bet you're right. So that's all on tomorrow's show. Don't miss it. All right. So be here tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock. And if you can't be here at 7, we replay it at noon, 530, and again sometime during the evening. So join us then. Until then, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best, and this is what's happening in your community.